about what our first topic was ATP right but before ATP we also discuss about respiration basic of respiration okay respiration is actually <clears throat> breakdown up glucose molecules breakdown of glucose molecule to release what to release energy in the form of atp in the form of atp atp means adenosine triphosphate then we discussed about types of respiration one is aerobic respiration another one we have anaerobic aerobic cell need what oxygen right anaerobic no need of oxygen happening and the absence of oxygen okay here energy yield will be more it means atp will be more here less atp will produce up to here we then we discuss about what is atp atp is a molecule right energy currency molecule that give you energy directly to the cell okay adenosine atp means it's a molecule contain adenosine yes how do you say i'm fine thank you khalijara triphosphate we discuss about khalijara you came late to the class the atp uh. is a important molecule why because it is water soluble and because of small size atp can move from one place to another place in the second thing it the bond of atp can break easily yes to produce energy so it produces energy this is one of the past paper question i discussed with you already here this is the rule of adenosine triphosphate why atp is compulsory this is that okay yes anyone doing disturbance don't do i am not keeping you mute because you people are grade 12 students and hope i hope you will be in a like you know in a quiet environment so up to here then we discuss about steps that are involved in the process of respiration no no by the way then we discuss about chemo osmosis right how atp will produce am i clear how atp well produce it's supposed to be atp like capital okay produce in a cell so how atp well produce in a cell i discuss with you 
two mechanisms for the production of ATP. The first one we have, anyone please? Yes, anyone? Where, how ATP will produce, please? Hello? Sorry. Uh, what? That's, yes. uh, that's where. Tell me. Yes, correct. Uh, when we have substrate. Substrate, yes. Level phosphorylation. Yes, and oxidation level phosphorization. What mean by phosphorylation? Anyone please? Substrate level phosphorylation. Sorry, very good. I think phosphorylation means adding phosphate to a molecule. Addition of addition of phosphate that is called what that is called phosphorylation for example you have atp adp sorry adp means adenosine diphosphate let's suppose this is adenosine and to this adenosine two phosphate attached so this is adp adenosine triphosphate now okay when one phosphate will add to this molecule so what will happen adenosine will convert into what it will convert into a t p adenosine triphosphate right so it means you got what you got energy in the form of atp so one way through which adp will convert into atp one way through which atp will form that will be substrate level phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation when for example this is substrate one okay let's suppose this is substrate one within respiration processes right there are many steps of respiration so when one substrate one is converting into substrate two when one intermediate molecule during the process of respiration when that is converting from one substrate to another that produce enough energy that produce enough energy so by that energy that help in the synthesis of bond and that convert adp into atp the atp will directly form here in this case so this was substrate level phosphorylation while another one that we discussed that was that was what please anyone please anyone oxidative Oxy it's oxidative layer phosphorylation phosphorylation correct yes oxidative phosphorylation mean the phosphorylation are the addition of phosphate that happen because of redox reaction. Redox reaction is a chemistry term. Redox means one well molecule reduce, another well oxidize. But let me do it in detail. You can see here oxidative phosphorylation. For example, this is one intermediate. This is one molecule. Okay, this is one substrate and one this what is happening this substrate when it is converting into substrate two when it is converting into substrate two so at that time what will happen 
this 12 loss what this that substrate will loss hydrogen ion okay plus electron so right it means this substrate one will become what oxidize or reduce the reaction this will what if it lost the electron please tell me hi if it's lost electrons, so definitely it will oxidize and the reaction is called what? Oxidation. So when it lost hydrogen and electron, so what will happen? That electron will received by electron carrier molecule. And the name of that is NAD, nicotine amide adenine dynamo. In this case, <coughs> in this case, who will receive the electron? Please be with me. Who will receive electron? Eh? NAD. NAD will receive electron. And NAD will convert into NADH. Correct or no? So it means this NAD become what? Reduce or oxidize? NAD reduced. reduced. Very good. So why this is happening? right you know like this nadh will now act is electron like they will take the electron toward ox electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation so let's suppose for example this is the structure of mitochondria we know that this process the process of what The process of the process of respiration take aerobic respiration will take place in mitochondria. So this is the matrix of mitochondria. This inner region is called matrix, and this is inner membrane. You remember or no? And this one is outer membrane of mitochondria. Am I clear? This is outer membrane of mitochondria. And this is intramembranic space, space between two membrane, intramembranic space. I want to make it white. This is the space between two membrane. Okay? Intramembranic space. Now, what will happen? So let's suppose this is a mitochondria okay and this is the matrix of sorry i have to make it like uh, uh, you know like this. for example okay now inner membrane right up mitochondria Okay, so remember, you know, outside there are three steps of respiration. Can you tell me the name of that? The first step is what? Glycolysis, right? I will write it down to Sorry, you again. Sir, what's the question? I couldn't hear you. What are the steps of respiration? I will write it down now, don't worry. First one is glycolysis. Another one is Crip cycle. And the last one is oxidative phosphorylation. Transport chain. Or electron transport change. I give you this as a homework that where the glycolysis will take place, where the Crip cycle will take place, and where electron transport change will take place. So where the process of glycolysis will take place? Uh, in the cytoplasm of the cell. Very good. What is your name? Uh, Rayan. Rayan. Good. Where Crip cycle will take place? Uh, in the matrix. Good. Of, uh, mitochondria. And where electron transport chain will take place? Uh, in the foldings of the matrix. And the inner membrane. Very good. Correct. Now, look at here. For example, this is a matrix of mitochondria. Here, if you remember, 
I told you that NAD, like you know, whenever the creep cycle is happening or the stiffs up, so in that, you know, NAD will convert into what? NAD H H, right? Correct or no? So what will happen with this NADH? It will go toward this membrane. And on this membrane, there is certain molecule, certain protein molecule, right? Certain electron carrier protein molecule. So when NADH reach here, so what will happen? This will lose electron. And when it lost electron, it will receive by this protein molecule first. I don't want to mention the name of that because it's not the part of our cell. Now, this be with me, boys. This electron will be gained by another molecule, and that will gain by another. It means one will oxidize, another will reduce. This is just like. If you, if I have a ball in my hand, and right, someone give me like they throw the ball towards me, so I will catch that. So at that time, I reduced because I got the electron. While the another one oxidized because I catch the ball from him. I become reduced. I become down because like you know I received it. So I just it is just like this I take I, I, I take loan from someone right so by this this electron will take by one then another it will moving in a change manner from one to another be with me boys now when it is moving through this series so you know this produce certain like you know this produce certain effect because of like certain energical effect or something like that. Because of that, you know, some channels will open in this. Some channels, which channels will open? Anyone please? Channels for proton. Channel for hydrogen ion. So when it is moving in the form of chain from one electron to another, it will push the hydrogen ion out to the intermembranic space. Right? Am I clear? Yes. And now, when outside the hydrogen ion concentration is increasing, right? When there is more oxygen hydrogen ion gradient, so what will happen? These hydrogen have to come back toward the matrix. By a special enzyme, the name of that enzyme is called what? Tell me. ATP? ATP? Synthane. And that enzyme you know, will help to convert ADP into ATP. Okay, that will convert ADP into ATP. If you see here, you know, if you see here, what is actually like, you know, the ATP formation happen with the help of oxidation. Oxidation of molecules is happening. Right? Yes. The electron is losing. Okay. So this level of phosphorylation is called oxidative phosphorylation. Addition of electron with the help of oxidation reaction or with the help of electron transport chain. So, sir, when the hydrogen ion comes back into the matrix, what happens then? At that, that hydrogen ion will come back to the matrix by ATP synthase enzyme. And that ATP synthase, when this hydrogen is like, you know, actual thing is just like that. When this hydrogen ion is coming in, right? So, it is studied that this hydrogen ion little bit like makes some 
some you know like you know this is just like when water is going through pipe so that has created some energical effect so by that effect yes. this this enzyme little bit rotate this little bit rotate and that rotation help to bind the adp with phosphate to make it okay you got it okay i hope this is clear now this pathway through which you are pushing hydrogen ion out and they are coming in right this is called what khali jara give me answer of this what's that what hydrogen ion going out and then coming back what's that another word used for that was hmm they go out and they come back uh, come back in uh, through protein carriers this is called chemoosmosis this is called what chemo chemo sorry chemo os sorry i think i write the name let me write it again ki mo mosis right this process was first studied by a scientist named peter in 1961 this process was proposed by a scientist named what peter okay metal in 1961 according to this process what will happen the hydrogen will exit yeah, and come back in. is moving through redox reaction they will pushing the proton channels will open and they will go out and they will come back okay this is called chemo osmosis right osmosis of chemical okay i hope this is clear up to here now remember boys what is this i'm going down i'm trying to go down okay all right now remember 1 nad this is just like what you know if you remember i give you example like you know n a d n sorry n a d h okay and f a d h right one n a d h will give you how much atp 3 atp and reality this is 2.5 but i am not going to that why 2.5 it is individual lecture for that i have to but it's not your level that why so uh, actually we are counting 3 atp uh, but in reality later on they studied it in more detail and they found that it's actually 2.5 okay but we are counting usually 3 atp okay now sir when you say it gives you 3 atp is what do you mean by that i am coming to all that all right now this is just like you know it is just like uh, the nad is just like what it is just like 
real or dollar. Okay. With this NAD, it will go toward electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is just like, uh, you know, uh, you know, money exchanger. They're changing the money. So this will give you how much if someone is like, uh, for example, if someone I have Pakistani, so for him, it will give you, for example, three rupees. Three rupees means three ATPs. Okay. Anyone want to mention their nationality? I can mention their, uh, you know, currency. Like for Khalid Jara, what is your currency? Muhammad Khalid Jara? Hi. You can't listen to me? By the way? It's okay, fine so far, other. So it is just like that. In electron transport chain, one NADH will give you three AT fees, right? And one FADH will give you two AT two. fees, yeah. Right, you know, like when hydrogen ion is coming in, so AT fees are forming, right? So like, for example, one NADH, uh, right, lost electron and they are passing through all this chain, so how much ATP will give you, okay? One is this. Another I want to, you people are here with me all? Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah. Good. Yes, sir, I'm right here. Good, now, you know, like, what is the rule of, you know, at the end, where this electron will go? When they passes through electron transport chain, who will receive this electron at the end? Please. This electron will receive by oxygen plus electron plus hydrogen. So they will form what? They will form water. So what is the rule of oxygen and respiration? It act is a final electron acceptor. It is, it is a final electron acceptor. Am I clear this? This point is very important, boys. Sir, can you repeat it, please? You know, like when NADH lost the electron and they are passing through a redox reaction. So at the end, that electron will catch by whom? That will catch by oxygen. And when oxygen get that, oxygen will also catch hydrogen ion. So both will combine and will form water. That's why whenever we are writing the reaction for respiration, so we are writing like this, glucose plus, car sorry, for oxygen, oxygen, it will give you water plus carbon dioxide plus energy. So the function of this oxygen is to act as a final electron acceptor. Right? And give you water at the end. I hope this is clear. Ali Jara clear or no? Let me check the time. Hmm. Someone want to take hands? Anyone want to take hands? Tell me. Please. For example, you can see it here that electron and nitrogen ion accepted by NADH, right? Now, this is the inner membrane of mitochondria. Inner membrane of what? Mitochondria. Now, this electron will accept by different routine molecule, different electron carrier, right? For example, that is present in this membrane like this, okay? Correct? 
so this will start move from one to another from one to another from one to another it mean like you know here when it lost electron so what happened with this it become oxidized and this well this electron this protein molecule become what reduce so after that it will move to well another it will reduce this one remain oxidized right it means redox reaction is happening and during that redox reaction what is happening channels open for what for hydrogen ion and that through that channels hydrogen ion will go toward the intracellular intramembranic space of mitochondria right and when that hydrogen ion coming back to atp synthesis so what happened what happened adp atp sorry atp will convert into atp right up here it is clear now what will happen with this electron at the end remember it where this electron will go please give me response what will happen will with this electron react with the very good correct the, the final electron acceptor will be oxygen what what was your answer please it will yes. yeah oxygen will take that it will catch plus hydrogen so oxygen plus hydrogen right so what they will form so this is for example hydrogen oxygen and plus hydrogen so collectively they will form what water but i don't want to go like how the electron and how, what is the mechanism of that reaction no it's not our part of syllabus we will just know that hydrogen well the final electron acceptor in that case is what oxygen right and when oxygen you know when oxygen receive that oxygen will also react with hydrogen ion and they will form what water so it means why we need hydro oxygen and aerobic respiration because oxygen act is a final electron except i hope it is clear up to here right so that's why the water whenever you are writing the equation for respiration you are mentioning what water now the process of respiration completed with us in some steps right okay please tell me what is the what are the name of these steps please first one is what gly colysis right colysis yes i, I will also go in detail and uh, another is creep cycle are also called and, what uh, electro citric acid cycle okay and third one we have electron transport change or oxidative phosphorylation so in these these three electron transport chain is about clear but still i will do these two in detail and then i will make a link between glycolysis creep cycle and electron transport chain hope this is clear to you all if you having any question regarding the lesson i have some time you can ask from me that okay thank you so much so today we are going to discuss about the steps that are involved in the process of respiration okay we have to do that in detail now so you can check it here respiration will complete in three steps okay the first step is process of respiration will complete in three steps okay the first one we have like policies okay second one we have creep cycle
okay, are citric acid cycles. Third one we have electron transport change or oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, up to here we understand. Now, we will discuss about glycolysis first. That what is glycolysis, then we will move towards others. Glycolysis is actually breakdown of glucose molecule. Definitely, and the process of respiration, you know, in the process of respiration, glucose plane, there will be breakdown of glucose, okay? So, you can see here, if you remember, I discussed with you already about this glucose is six carbon molecule, right or no? Glucose is six carbon molecule, it means and the structure, and the structure of glucose that contains six carbon. So, with, through glycolysis, it will convert into three carbon fragment. It will convert into three carbon fragment, two molecule containing three carbon fragment. Okay? And that is what, that is pyruvate. The name of that molecule is called pyruvate. Okay or no? So, one glucose will convert into two pyruvate and pyruvate is three carbon molecule. Okay, up to here, the process of glycolysis will complete. Okay, now this step, this glycolysis is oxygen independent, means no need of oxygen, means it's, this reaction doesn't depend on oxygen. no concern of oxygen with this reaction. Up to here, conversion of glucose into pyruvate. Now, if, for example, if you, glucose, if, if oxygen is present, if oxygen is present, in the presence of oxygen, this pyruvate, pyruvate, this if oxygen is present, so this pyruvate will enter to citric acid cycle. This pyruvate will convert into acetyl coenzyme A. This will convert into this, right or no? So this pyruvate is three carbon molecule, so it will convert into two carbon molecule, right? Okay. That acetyl coenzyme is two carbon molecule and that will take, you know, that into citric acid cycle. So it means now pathway, uh, you know, is now entered to citric acid cycle. You know, in this stage, this stage is actually link reaction. This is actually link reaction. You know, pyruvate converted to acetyl coenzyme A. Here, two reaction will take place. One is decarboxylation. Decarboxylation. Decarboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide. Here, carbon dioxide will release. That's why this is three carbon fragments, so this will become two carbon fragment. Okay? Now, along with that, in this step also, you know, NAD will <clears throat> convert into NADH2.
okay nadh2 so here d d dehydrogenation also take place okay now this is acetyl coenzyme a well combined with whom advelo right and this will make another intermediate another product called what citrate r citric acid citrate okay and that citrate will convert into different intermediate intermediate of the plane like this right it will change from one to another and at the last you will get again what is it oxalo acetate so this is just a cycle right acetyl coa plus oxalo acetate they will convert into citrate and then they will pass through a cycle <clears throat> that cycle is actually called citric acid cycle and on the way there will be reaction of what decarboxylation and along with that there will be also formation of nad nad will convert into nadh2 means the reduction of nad will also take place they will receive electron from what from these reactions and this nadh2 will later on go to what we have to electron transport chain right in this pathway you will also receive what if adh if a if a will convert into f a d h okay in this f a d and n a d will move toward here to for oxidative phosphorylation as i discussed you already in that lecture this this n a d r f a d n a d h 2 okay well release what their electron that will release electron right and that will pass through electron transport chain that will pass you know in the membrane there is you know in different places there is electron uh, electron carrier right or not so if there is electron carrier so they will receive that electron they will receive that electron this nadh will convert into what nad right and they will release that electron and that electron will attract by whom that electron will attract by special protein that is present in the membrane of mitochondria and that will pass through that series right and then you know that when it is passing through this protein they will push it out the hydrogen ion from the matrix of mitochondria to the intramembranic space and when they are coming back to atp synthase so adp will convert into atp right we discussed up to here right if you remember we also discuss about in within within glycolysis what will happen within glycolysis we are now going to count atp and nad and fad that will form in these reactions at these metabolic pathways right uh, check here this is your question regarding co enzyme a right so you can see here that this is pyruvate right pyruvate is three carbon molecule now this co enzyme a right this combined with that pyruvate in is a is a result of that you know at that time also what happened dehydrogenation happen decarboxylation happen and that coenzyme a plus pyruvate converted to what acetyl coa right actually this coenzyme a help this pyruvate to enter to world wear to citric acid cycle or creep cycle okay this coenzyme a help with that and they form what acetyl coa molecule and that acetyl coa molecule will combine with whom they will combine with oxalo acetate yes yes so pyruvate yes yes by the help of uh, co and coenzyme yes. a 
with the help of coenzyme A, five mm -hmm. are converted into acetyl yeah. for A. At, at this time, you know, NAD converted to NADH plus carbon dioxide. Okay? Ah, uh, okay. Coenzyme A, okay. Yeah. Coenzyme A actually help in the dehydrogenation, okay? And that, uh, you know, that convert pyruvate into what is acetyl CoA, right? Up to here it is clear, right? Yes. Now, we discuss about this link reaction in which pyruvate convert into acetyl CoA. So the reaction transport the pyruvate made in cytoplasm into the matrix. It means glucose convert into what? Glucose convert into what? Hey. Fructose. What fructose? Glucose convert into pyruvate. And that pyruvate from cytoplasm, it will enter to be a to mitochondria. And that will form inside that, it will form what? Acetyl CoA with the help of coenzyme. And acetyl CoA will then go into Krebs cycle, which take place in the matrix of mitochondria. Okay? Since there is two pyruvate form in glycolysis, so two acetyl CoA will form. So total, how much acetyl CoA we will have? One pyruvate is this, this converted into acetyl CoA, right? Another will be also there, right or no? Because glucose is three carbon molecules, sorry, six carbon molecules. If six carbon molecules split into two, so that will give you what? It will give you three carbon molecules, one pyruvate, and that three carbon molecule, another pyruvate. It means this pyruvate will enter to citric acid cycle also, and this one will also enter to that. So for that reason, when we are counting NAD and FAD, and ATP, you have to multiply that by two because one glucose molecule is entering to two, right? Up to right when we are counting energy, right? Right, or not? Yes. even on the way, also, yes. if you remember, if you remember, actually, if you remember glucose and the and glycolysis that will convert into triose. So, two triose, how many triose? Two triodes, right or no? So from mm -hmm. here we will start. We will start counting up our energy. If you are not, still you having some problem, so let's move to uh, that glycolysis now. It will be clear to you. You can check here. This is the process of glycolysis, right? You can see here. This is six carbon molecule, right or no? Right? So this is first tip and first tip glucose phosphorylation happen. And phosphorylation ATP utilize. ATP convert into sorry, ADP convert into ATP convert into ADP. Utilization of energy happen. And this is activation energy for the glucose to start the reaction. You remember that or no? That I told you already. I discussed. Right? Now, up to here, this hexose, hexose means six carbon molecules, hexose bypass pet, right? So this hexose bypass pet will convert into two molecules of triose phosphate. Hexose bypass pet, like one hexose, right? And this will be another hexose. Sorry, another one triose, and this will be another triose. It means one hex, hexose, hexose means six carbon molecule, convert into how much? One, two, three, two four, trio. five. Two, two triodes, yeah. right? Which is pyruvate. Yeah. No, no, that triode will then pass through intermediate to different product it will form, different other substrate or product, what you use the word, that will make, different intermediate will form. And later on, it will form what pyruvate, right? So when it is passing and making different intermediate, at that time, NAD will convert into NADH. Means NAD will get electron and that will convert into NADH. 
in ad will reduce correct and at the same time atp will also produce on this reaction so why i take it two here two here two because i have one triose here so this uh, this triose will also enter two this will also follow the same pathway so for that reason when we are counting energy and glycolysis and krip cycle we have to multiply that with two right so let's see first you atp calculation in glycolysis you can check it here how many atp utilize here two atp utilize yeah. right yes. one glucose makes two atp yeah. no utilization is how much utilization in this first step mm. in this first phosphorylation two atp utilize right yes two atp utilize and the importance of this i told you already one is activation energy another you know the size of that glucose will become large when it is phosphorylated it can't escape from it back from the cytoplasm okay so here i use energy i like you know lose energy convert into adp loss of energy happen loss of energy happens okay yes. after that i'm getting energy why i'm getting Sir Yes. Then what's the point if you're uh, uh, giving to ATP and gaining to ATP? No, let's see. We will count it now. I give to ATP, but let's see how much I gain it, right? So when triose is passing through intermediate, so I got one ATP oh. from one side, correct? Yes. Another ATP I got from another side. So total number okay. of ATP is equal to how much? Two ATP, right? Be with me, boys. I am talking about this ATP. I am talking about this one, right? These two ATP yeah. I got. Then this is from yeah. This is from triode, right? Triode. No, no. This is triode. This is triode, this is triode now. Pyruvate is very far away. I am going to all pyruvate gradually. So oh, okay. when triose convert into one intermediate, so it give me what two ATP, right? Okay. One ATP from one and another side, another. So it means I got two ATP. Then it pass to another intermediate, and when that intermediate change into another, so at that time it release electron dehydrogenation happen again, and NAD convert into NADH2. So I got again two. I got again what? I got not again, but I got two, one NADH from one side and another from another, another side. side. So total number of NADH how much? Two NADH. Am I clear? Yes. Good. Yes, sir. Now, when that pass again to in, through intermediate, I got again two ATP. Correct. Two ATP, one ATP from this side. And another ATP from another side. So total number of ATP I got how much? Four. Four ATP, right? So yes. if you see mm -hmm. here, so the total, so this NAD will go here. This NADH will go here. Okay, this NADH will go here. Why? This NADH, NADH will go to the to the membrane. Yes. No, no. For which reaction it will go? Where it will go? Hey, where this NADH will go? Anyone in the class, please? To the, to the link reaction. Very good. Correct. Correct. Khalid uh, Muhammad Khalid Jara, you are correct. It will go for oxidative phosphorylation, right or no? So when it when it reach to oxidative phosphorylation. So how many ATP I will get there from this two NADH? How many ATP I will get? We get uh, two. How many ATP I will get from one NADH, please? Uh, three. Three, sir. Three. From one I will get three, but here I have two NADH. So how so many? So you I will get six. I will six. get six. Correct. I will total number of ATP. I will get how much? Six ATP. Six. Correct or no? Yes. Now, 
up to here, I got what two pyruvate, and these two pyruvate have to enter towards citric acid cycle. Up to here, my reaction, my glycolysis is complete, and I have to count my ATPs that how much I got it. So one, two, you can check, you can do counting with me. Two plus six two. plus two. So, so total number of ATP, ten. how much? Ten. Ten, I got ATP. But net gain, how much? How much is in my ten. hand now? Not ten. ten. Because two, ten. I already utilized. Already the reaction tag from me in the beginning. So that's already utilized by reaction for the activation energy. Ten. So net Which gain business? and glycolysis, 10 minus 2 is equal to 8 molecule or 8 ATPs. Correct? Yes. yes sir. If one glucose molecule is converting into what? If one glucose molecule is converting into two pyruvate, so at that time, in, uh, in that step, the net gain will be 8 ATPs. Yes, sir. I hope this is clear to you all, right, Arno? Anyone have yes, confusion, yes, they can ask. Correct, right? Um, now, Mr. this pyruvate is. Mr. NADH is basically reduced NAD, right? NAD, yes, correct, exactly. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, when this this pyruvate will now move via, we are there. Okay, one thing more, please, just wait. Don't go toward that. You know, here, how many direct ATP I got? Like substrate level phosphorylation, how many ATP I got? Please. Two. Substrate level phosphorylation. Ah, eight. Wrong. Ten. <laughs> Wrong. No, 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 no. Please. Sir, Wrong can you repeat like the question, please? Okay. Listen my question once again. How many a substrate level phosphorylation ATP I got in glycolysis? Six. Substrate level. Oh. Ali Jara, please. Substrate level, how many I got? Direct, I ATP, tried all numbers, direct ATP, I got four, my dear. Direct ATP, I got how many? Four. You can check. Four. Correct or no? Oh, oh directly. Yes, you got four. Directly. Four. And oxidative phosphorylation, I got six. Mm -hmm. uh, it means I got two reduced NAD. I got two reduced NAD. So if you two multiply three, so it will give you what? Six. Right? Yes. And direct ATPs, I got how much from glycolysis? Four oh. ATPs. So total number of ATP, I got 10. But when I utilized before two, when the reaction was starting, so at that time, so 10 minus two is equal to so once again, repeat with me. The substrate level ATP, I got what? Two. Four. Four, yeah. And for from oxidative phosphorylation, I got two Four. NAD. So it means I got six ATP from that. Yeah. I hope this is clear right now. Okay? Very good. Yes, sir. Yes. Now tell me what will happen with this pyruvate. Pyruvate? Which yes. we to us as a acetate or acetate? Very good. This pyruvate will now enter to link reaction. And with the help of, you can come here with the help of coenzyme A, right? Coenzyme. It yes. H will convert into acetyl CoA and at the same time de 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 uh, dehydrogenation will take place, right? So you can check here. This is what. This is with you. This is pyruvate, three carbon molecule. So this three carbon molecule will convert into what? C2 by the combination of which enzyme? By the combination of coenzyme A. And that mm -hmm. will convert that into acetyl. Carbon dioxide. That will gone. convert that into acetyl CoA. But which reaction will? Take this decarboxylation and dehydrogenation, and that hydrogen, mm -hmm. hydrogen will receive by whom? And the NAD. Very good, and that NAD will convert into NADH. Correct? Yes. So you can check here. In the link reaction, 
pyruvate enters the matrix of mitochondria and is decarboxylated. Co carbon dioxide is removed from pyruvate and then diffused out of the mitochondria and out of the cell. We know already, right, that in respiration, carbon dioxide will come. Decar dehydrogenated, the hydrogen is removed from pyruvate and is packed by NAD and produce, re producing reduced NAD. That's convert pyruvate into two carbon compound carbon. What? Acetyl-coenzyme <laughs> A. That's carbon acetyl-coenzyme A. Yeah. Right or no? And that time, yeah. you know, that molecule will combine with coenzyme A, right? That two carbon molecule compound, two carbon containing molecule will combine with coenzyme A, and that will give you acetyl coenzyme A. Correct? Or no? Yes. And that acetyl coenzyme A will combine. Now this, this acetyl coenzyme A enter to crypt cycle or citric acid cycle. Right? And that co acetyl coenzyme A will combine with whom? With oxaloacetate and that will convert into straight and the cycle will start now. And that is actually crypt cycle or citric acid cycle. So in our next lecture, we will move toward that in detail. So, but remember boys, if you see here from leg link reaction, how many NAD I got it? One from one side, one NAD from one side, correct or no? Yes. One NADH from yes. one side and another NADH from another side because there are two pyruvate, right? NADH. So total NADH I got how many? 2NAD. So if I got 2NADH2, 2, 2, so it means how many ATPs I got? Three. Six. Yes, six. six. Two multiply three is equal to how much? Six ATP I got it. Right? So this is oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, here, here is no substrate level phosphorylation. Is it, this is oxidative phosphorylation because this NAD. Well, NADH will move toward oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so from length reaction, I got six ATP in the form of two NADH. And when that NADH enters to the oxidative phosphorylation, it will give me six. <laughs> Hope it is clear up to here, right? Are any confusion? Ali Jara? No, sir. If you have any question regarding this, you can ask from me. Okay? Yeah, when I revise. Uh, boys, look at here. This is the summary of the lecture or overview of cellular respiration. Yes. If you see here, glucose convert into pyruvate, right? Okay. At the same time, we got ATPs and we also got what NADH2. And then that pyruvate entered to citric acid cycle by through link reaction. And link reaction decarboxylation happened carbon dioxide release, along with that NADH also form, right? And acetyl coenzyme yes. enter to citric acid cycle, so that passes again to different stages. So we got at that time a ATP, we receive NADH and FADH. If ATP are, we have direct ATP, so it's okay, they can utilize. But FAD and NAD that we received from glycolysis, from crib, from length reaction and from crib cycle. All that will move toward electron transport chain so that it pass through different protein and that will push hydrogen ion out to the intracellular space of mitochondria from matrix, okay? And that's when it is going back to ATP synthesis, so that will form what? ATP. In the final electron acceptor here, we have what that electron will cage at the end by whom? By oxygen and that oxygen will convert into what? A to water. Okay, yes. so hope it is, this is clear now. Okay, any, any question? Boys, in the last lecture, we discussed about glycolysis and length reaction, right? And then we count number of ATPs in glycolysis and length reaction, right? 
and glycolysis is the net gain of ATP was how much? Eight, right? Total we got how much? Ten. But when we minus the two that is utilized in first step of glycolysis, so the net gain will be eight. Then pyruvate will convert into acetyl A, right? With the help of coenzyme A, right? And that step also NADH2 form, and that NADH2, like you know, that was two molecules, so that more toward oxidative phosphorylation. So it means from link reaction, I got how many ATPs? Please be with me. Tell me how many ATPs from link reaction, total number of ATP from link reaction. Six number of ATP I got. How many? Six, right? Yes, sir. Because one NAD from one side, another NADH from another side. So both one NADH give us three ATP, so means it means six ATP, I got it. Now, if you see here, up to here this was, what is this here, what should I mention? Pyruvate, right? Pyruvate. Pyruvate will convert into acetyl-CoA. Okay, acetyl CoA is two carbon molecule, and when acetyl CoA combined with four carbon molecule, and the name of that is what oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate, right? It will form citric acid. Citric acid is six carbon molecule, and it is the first, you know, it's the first molecule that form here. That's why this this pathway is also called citric acid. Right now, this citric acid cycle will convert into another molecule, then it will convert into another, another, right? And again, you at the last, I will get again a Remember, boys, here I don't want to mention you the name of that intermediate because this is not part of our syllabus. We are concerned with how many NAD form here and how many FAD and ATP, right? Now, just check here. Here I got how many NAD? One, right? So one NAD I got here. NADH2. Okay, and then I got what? One ATP. Direct ATP substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, and then I get what? Two ATP again. Here there was two intermediates, so when they were converting, so they give you what? Two NADH2. Right? And then we get what? One FAD. It means that during creep cycle, I got total number of three NADH because this one and this one, it will give you three NADH, right or no? So this three NADH will go toward electron transport chain and it will give me how many ATPs? Please be with me. Tell me how many ATPs? Six. Six. Uh, no, think one time more, please. Two NADH and one NADH. So how many? We have three NADH, right? So three NADH will give me three multiply three, right or no? So it will give you nine ATPs. Oh, yes. Nine, yes. Nine. Yes, good. And this is one FAD. So this will also move to an electron transport chain. So how many ATP it will give you? Yes, please. Three, uh, two, two. Two ATP is very good. You will get two ATP, right? Two. Yeah. So now let's count total number of ATP you got in citric acid cycle from one cycle. How many ATP we got? Count with me. Let me change the Eleven. color. Nine plus one here, one direct ATP. Plus 12. two here. So total number how many? 
12. Right or no? Yes, sir. So it means yes. I got 12 number of ATP from one citric acid cycle. But if you remember, again and again, I'm telling you that there are two pyruvate. So from another side, how many I will get? 12. 12, very good. 12, sir. So total number of ATP that I will get from the breakdown or from the oxidation of glucose molecule and Krebs cycle, that will be how much? 24. How much? 24. 24. 24, right? Good. I hope up to here it is clear, right? Okay. Now, 24, I got it here. Good. Now, let me count all ATP again. From glycolysis net gain was what? From glycolysis net gain was how many? Two. Eight. Net gain. Eight, 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 eight. Yes. From length reaction, how many? Zero. From length reaction. Zero. From length reaction. Just think when pyruvate was converted into acetyl CoA. So what happened at that time? NAD farm or no? Yes, reduced NAD. Yes, it means NADH farm at that time, right or no? Yes. So yes. we get one molecule, uh, three molecules. So total number one NADH from here and one NADH from the other side. So it means we got six ATP. Six. Yeah. So one NADH, this is length reaction when pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA. So one NADH from this side, so definitely from another side also one NADH. So total number of uh, ATPs, how many we have? Total number of ATPs we have uh, six. six, right? So we have six numbers of ATPs, right? Yes. From length reaction. So put it here. This is from length reaction. This is from glycolysis. This is from link reaction, and how many we got from Krebs cycle? Please. 24. 20, Very good. Uh, Don't 24. be in doubt. 24. Good. Right. So total number of ATPs that we got it by the oxidation of glucose molecule. I will put it here. Okay, right? So total number how many? Count it. 38. 38. Very good. Correct. So 38, right? So remember, you should be careful about, you should know like how many ATPs by a substrate level phosphorylation and how many we got by um, oxidative phosphorylation. Okay? You should also make, this is your work, make, uh, take it as a homework that how many we got it by substrate level phosphorylation and how many ATPs we got it by uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. Okay. Good. Now. So, sir, this is general. Like, this always happens during oxidative phosphorylation that you get 38 ATPs. FADH will give you two ATPs, and NADH will give you three ATPs for one molecule of that. You know, this NADH will go to one electron transport. Okay, chain. one molecule. Yeah. Okay. And that will last electron, right? And that will, you know, that will pass through that pathway. You remember chemo osmosis and that will give you what uh, ATP is, right? Now, you can check this once again. Crip cycle is a series of steps catalyzed by enzyme in matrix, in the matrix of mitochondria, right? First, this one is length reaction. Pyruvate will convert into acetyl CoA and acetyl CoA when combined with carb four carbon molecule that will form citric acid and that will convert into another molecule, right? Is that you can check here is a dehydrogenation is happening and it's, it's losing nitrogen, so that will gain by whom? By NADH, correct or no? And when definitely it will gain by NADH or FADH, okay? So this is the complete cycle for Krebs cycle.
okay i hope this is clear to you all about the c about uh, you know about all the steps are the pathways that are involved in the process of respiration so please if you having any question regarding this lesson you can ask me question please Uh, Mister, can you explain? Okay, Rian, I just want to clear your uh, question. That you know, like if glucose is converting, right? Sorry, glucose, right? If glucose is converting into what? Into pyruvate. So this tip is actually this is which process? This is glycolysis, pyruvate. So this is. Up to here, this is oxygen and dependent. Like no effect of oxygen on this. This no need of oxygen. Like whatever, but this will happen. Now, after if now here is condition. If oxygen is present, this pyruvate will convert into acetyl CoA. It means that this pyruvate will enter to Krip cycle path to Krip cycle. Right or no? If oxygen is present, now if oxygen is not present, so this pyruvate will move toward where? This will move toward anaerobic respiration, and human it will form lactic acid. It depends on organism. That which organism is that? Because different organism have different organism. So pyruvate will convert into lactic acid in human or animal. While if it is yeast. So what will happen? It will convert into ethanol no. plus glucose, carbon dioxide, right? So now, so lactic acid is formed uh, when lactic acid is formed, and then oxygen is available to the body again. It goes and converts yes, to good, acetyl good, CoA good. again. No, no, no. Then what will happen if oxygen is available later on? You know, like you are talking about oxygen death. So at that time, this lactic acid will go convert back to pyruvate, and that pyruvate will convert back to acetyl CoA. Is it clear? Okay. I'm yes, talking sir. about this lactic acid, right? Because this reaction is irreversible. Is it clear? Remember, boys. Yes, sir. Just remember when this pyruvate is converting into lactic acid. Here, very nice. You know, you can check it here. What happened? Focus here, boys. Something strange happening here, right? What is that? What's that? This is oxidation reaction. So here, you can check here any DH. Loss. What that it's hydrogen been... means? Yeah, here you. It's not like that. That it reduced, but definitely uh, it's lost the electron yeah, again. Correct. correct, right? So it means what happened here? We lost energy. We lost energy or no? Yes. How how many ATPs we lost here? Three. Three ATP loss here. We. Same. Another pyruvate we have from another glucose. So how many ATP will you lost? Three more. Six. Three here, right? So total number of molecule, how many? Three plus six. three is equal to six, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So and glycolysis, how many net gain? Net gain was how many? Six. Net six. gain and glycolysis. Seven. Tell me, be, you know, net, uh, eight, eight. Eight, eight, eight. 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 Eight when glucose yeah. was converting into pyruvate eight. So eight minus two, how many? Sorry, eight minus six. Two. 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 So what is the net gain in anaerobic respiration? Two. two. Net gain is two. That's why whenever we are studying at lower grades, we are telling to the student that within anaerobic respiration, ATP molecules are energy displaced. Why? Because the net gain here, if if glucose move toward anaerobic respiration, so the net gain will be two ATP's molecule. 
I hope this is clear, right? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. I have another question. Good. All right. Uh, dear students, in the last lecture, we discussed about steps and all and the process of respiration, okay? In which we discussed about, you know, a aerobic respiration, especially, right? Uh, if you remember, in which glucose convert into pyruvate with the help of glycolysis or through glycolysis pathway. If glucose is available, pyruvate will convert into, sorry, if oxygen is available, so what will happen? This pyruvate will convert into acetyl CoA, and that acetyl CoA will combine with oxaloacetate and passing through Krebs cycle, right? And it's in different steps, it will give us NAD and FADH. And that NAD, FADH will go to one electron transport chain, right? And at the same time, you will also get ATP directly, a direct ATP substrate level, right? Now, a question here is now for today that let's suppose if oxygen is not available, so what will happen in that case? If for fire weight, there is no oxygen, there is no availability of oxygen. So at that time, this pyruvate will enter to anaerobic pathway. It will follow anaerobic respiration. Okay, now pyruvate converge, pyruvate will converge, convert into ethanol or lactate. Now it depends on organism. Like if the, this respiration is happening in yeast, so it will convert into, into ethanol plus carbon dioxide. While if it is happening in human or animal body, so the product of that will be lactate or lactic acid, right? Now, why the pro why product of anaerobic respiration different from each other? Because of enzymes that are involved in the process of anaerobic respiration because of different enzymes. Like we have different enzymes from yeast for this step. Because of that, we have the product of anaerobic respiration is, de is different in different organisms, right? So we will discuss that what are that enzymes and what are that steps that are involved in that pathway. Is it clear? So let us discuss about that now. Now these are two pathways. One is ethanol pathway, another is lactate pathway, right? So alcohol fermentation occurs in yeast. Means, you know, like formation of ethanol, this pathway will happen in yeast, right? Yeast is, yeast is a fungi, you know already, right? While lactate pathway, lactic acid fermentation will occur in human. Now, if you see here, this is what ethanol, this is glucose, right? This glucose will convert into pyruvate through glycolysis, right? To pyruvate. So at the same time, right, what will happen? Two ATP will form when glucose is converting into pyruvate, so direct ATP will be two, right? And also, if you remember, in glycolysis, we are getting two NADH. Right or no? We will receive two NADH and glycolysis, right? Up to pyruvate. Now, when this pyruvate is now moving toward anaerobic respiration, when this pyruvate is moving, it's converting into ethanol. So, what will happen? At that time, two NADH that's already produced in glycolysis, so that will utilize here. The two NADH will utilize here, right? And this two NADH will convert back to NAD, right? It will lose the electron and that will convert back into NAD. Is it clear? Means this will oxidize once again. Right? So what happened here? Here we lost what 
we lost 2 NADH. This 2 NADH, sub, if it is aerobic respiration, so this supposed to enter to here, the electron transport chain to give us how many ATPs? To give us, please be with me, to give us six ATPs, right or no? Correct. But what happened with an anaerobic respiration? That NADH that was produced and where? In glycolysis, that NADH here utilized back within anaerobic respiration. Right? So only we get what? We having two ATPs within anaerobic respiration, right? Is it clear? Those two NADH that that were produced in glycolysis that utilized here. And we just within that utilized in anaerobic respiration, so we get only what? Only two ATP. So the net gain in anaerobic respiration is two ATP. Right? Now, if you come towards this lactate pathway, so this lactate pathway, this will happen here in human body. Right? So the first step, again, glucose will convert into pyruvate through glycolysis. And after that, pyruvate will convert into lactate. When pyruvate is converting into lactate, so what will happen at that time, again, to NADH that were produced in glycolysis that will utilize here. And we lost that to NADH again. So it means we again lost 6 ATP. Only remaining with us is two ATP. So the net gain here also two ATP. Right? Is it clear up to here? Now, if you check here, the difference between these two pathways is that pyruvate is converted to lactate directly. While here, pyruvate is converted into converting into acetylaldehyde, and after that, it is converting into ethanol. And the process of decarboxylation is happening, right? That decarboxylation, you know, already the removal of carbon dioxide, right? Or the release of carbon dioxide. So this is ca this carbon dioxide. Whenever we are writing, whenever we are writing equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast, we we will write glucose will also release. Ethanol plus carb sorry, uh, carbon dioxide will also release. Ethanol plus carbon dioxide. So that is the product within yeast. While in human, only we are we will mention lactate or lactic acid. Why? Because no elimination of carbon dioxide here. Is it clear? Now let us discuss about, you know, like these are two paths, two steps, and here one step. So how these two steps and one step will happen. So let us discuss about that in detail. All right, boys. Now let's come toward the ethanol pathway in detail. And yeast and in plant, the pyruvate is removed by converting it into ethanol, right? Now, pyruvate in first step, what will happen? Remember, this pyruvate will convert into acetaldehyde. It will convert into what? Acetaldehyde. With the help of enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase. And the, this pyruvate decarboxylase will do what? Removal of carbon dioxide from pyruvate. Right? So the step that happened here is what? Decarboxylation. And pyruvates will convert into acetylaldehyde. And this acetylaldehyde will accept electron from NADH, and NADH will convert into NAD. And right, this tip will happen with the help of alcoholic dehydrogenase enzyme. Right? And that acetyl aldehyde will convert into ethanol. Correct? So it means this alcoholic dehydrogenase enzyme once again help in dehydrogenation. Right? And that convert acetyl aldehyde into ethanol. Correct? All right, boys. Now let's come to all the lactic 
reflective pathway or lactic acid pathway. In mammalian muscle, it are, that are deprived of oxygen, means when there is deficiency of oxygen, so high at that time, when glucose convert into pyruvate, and if there is deficiency of oxygen, so at that time, pyruvate itself is in hydrogen acceptor and is removed by converting it to lactate again, right? NAD is released, right? What happened here, actually? This NAD will again lose electron and that will accept by whom? By pyruvate. And pyruvate will convert into lactate. Pyruvate will convert into lactate. So the enzyme that was that required for pathway and yeast that is different from this. So here lactate dehydrogenase responsible for conversion of pyruvate into lactate. Is it clear? So here pyruvate directly act as an electron acceptor and that convert pyruvate into lactate, right? Now, I would like to explain this lactate, what happened with this lactate with the help of Curie cycle, right? That I just, I just want to give explanation of that, that what will happen to this. Like that, so most of the students asking this question. So let me uh, discuss that in detail now, okay? Okay, boys, let's see what will happen with that like that, right? So remember in liver, right, that like that will enter, it will reach to, from muscle through blood plasma, it will reach to liver, and liver that like that will convert into pyruvate through a pathway called gluconeogenesis. Remember, this is very important from, you have, you have to learn about this. Gluconeogenesis is conversion of non-carbohydrate material into carbohydrate. So in this case, lactate will convert into pyruvate, right? And pyruvate will convert back into glucose, right? And that glucose will enter once again to muscle, right? In glycolysis of that will happen. What will happen? Glycolysis of that will happen. Now, if glycolysis of that is happening, right, so definitely pyruvate will come. So again, we have two conditions here. If oxygen is that pyruvate will enter to, uh, H will convert to acetyl-CoA and will enter to citric acid cycle. But if no oxygen, so what will happen? That pyruvate will again convert into what? Lactate. And that lactate will again uh, enter to blood plasma and we reach to liver right so this is a complete cycle of that that what is happening with uh, lactate is it clear up to here hope this is clear up to here if you're having any question regarding this topic you can ask okay boys one thing we should also clear about that lactate is converted into glucose so that glucose can also be stored in the form of glycogen right glycogen is the store form of what glucose so it can convert into glycogen and your liver if whenever you need that glucose it will glycogen will convert back into what glucose glycogen will convert back into glucose and that glucose if it is like you know if the pathway is anaerobic that will convert back into lactate and lactate well if there is supply of oxygen that will convert back into glucose. So this is the same cycle you can check here. Is it clear up to here? So sir, this is the cycle and oxygen isn't available? Sorry? Yeah, it so means this if, the let cycle. me discuss, yeah. If you know, if oxygen is not available according to this cycle, so glucose will convert into glycogen, lactate will convert into glucose and that will convert into glycogen, right? Is it clear? Another point, if there is two condition, this can convert into glycogen or glycogen can convert back into glucose and glucose will convert back into pyruvate because conversion of glucose into pyruvate, no need of oxygen. But after that, it depends. If oxygen is present, so that pyruvate will enter to an arrow. If oxygen is present, that pyruvate will convert into acetyl-CoA. But that is not concerned with this cycle. This is not concerned with this pathway, 
right? Here he is talking about if oxygen is not present, so that pyruvate will convert into lactate, right? Only you need the concept of this topic. Okay. Or oxygen deficient. Okay. Uh, glucose uh, in ethanol pathway, glucose uh, turns into pyruvate. Okay. Uh, and then uh, acetyl aldehyde, then ethanol. While in, in the lactate pathway, it's only one, uh, one intermediate where uh, no pyruvate inter turns into lactate. Good, good. No intermediate. No, no intermediate. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah, no answer. Yes. Yes. Further. And then six uh, ATPs are produced from each one. Six ATP will not produce actually two NADH well utilized. It means six ATPs well utilized, right? Yes. And from each one, two net gain ATP will be two. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, so today the topic of discussion is oxygen depth. What is oxygen depth? This is actually the extra oxygen that I'm taking after the exercise when I finish exercise. Now question is why I'm taking that. Let's see, for example, when I am at rest, so the need of oxygen for my body still is less, right? But when I start exercise directly, so what will happen? My muscle activity will increase. Be with me. My muscle activity will be more. So when my muscle activity is more, so it means muscle contraction in its relaxation is more and that need more energy. And for that energy, I need what? I need more oxygen to break glucose. My body need more energy, so for that I need more oxygen for the breakdown of glucose molecule by the process of aerobic respiration. That's why my breathing rate will gradually start to increase so that I take more oxygen from outside. So when I'm taking that oxygen initially, so initially oxygen, dema oxygen demand for my body is more. Oxygen demand is more than what? Oxygen that I am supply. Yeah, oxygen that I am getting, the oxygen supply good. That is, oxygen supply is less because initially my breathing rate is going to increase, but it is not at high rate that the, ox not the oxygen, it is not supplying to my cell sufficient. Still, I have to increase my breathing rate. Now, so if oxygen demand is high initially, so it means some of my cell will move towards oxygen demand is high, so some of my cell will start because oxygen demand is high and uh, there is deficiency of oxygen. So this condition is deficiency of oxygen, oxygen deficit. So when there is deficiency of oxygen, so some of my cell will start what? Anaerobic respiration. Some of my cell will start anaerobic respiration. Why that will do anaerobic respiration? Because my body need energy and there is no in one way is like oxygen is providing to the cells so they're doing but anaerobic respiration will start so that they also form energy even that is not that is less energy but still our body cell divert toward anaerobic respiration right so at that time you know is a result of that anaerobic respiration lactic acid will form 
we know already that the product of anaerobic respiration within human or animal that is what lactic acid and if you check here in the graph up to here at rest there is very less oxygen need from for my body but when i start exercise you can check here from this point so my oxygen uptake is increasing gradually right it is this point it reach to the peak or it reach to a constant range that i need this point i need right up this amount of oxygen i need at that time during exercise right so it means that this graph supposed to be initially at like from the beginning it supposed to be like this this graph supposed to be start from this so the two lactic acid form in my body but it doesn't happen like this oxygen start increasing gradually and is a result of this deficiency of oxygen is a result of this deficiency of oxygen lactic acid accumulate in my body cell this is lactic acid is a result of that what lactic acid form anaerobic respiration happen okay now you know when i stop exercise at this point okay so my breathing rate should stop like oxygen should not like because muscle activity stop so oxygen should also stop direct and this graph should come directly down right but it it will not happen like this when you stop exercise muscle activity stop but still you are taking oxygen still i am taking this extra oxygen you can check the graph is coming like in this way why in order to convert this lactic acid this lactic acid you can check here this this lactic acid back into what water and carbon dioxide or to convert this lactic acid back into pyruvate and after that it will convert back into glucose and that will store by liver in the form of glycogen in the liver okay so simple i will tell you this extra oxygen the post exercise oxygen that i am taking for the breakdown of lactic acid and to carbon dioxide in water right so that extra oxygen is actually what oxygen debt is it clear post exercise oxygen uptake is oxygen debt is it clear uh, yes sir all right you know this lactic acid that form initially this lactic acid form because of deficiency of oxygen but here oxygen is more that from our need so that's why this lactic acid consider it here so this lactic acid will convert and this lactic acid will bring back to down to means like to low level right to normal level is it clear so this is actually what oxygen depth the extra oxygen i am taking back i think your question is clear right now riyan is it clear yes Good. yes sir